It's a global issue, and Kenyans are on the front line. They fight to preserve the roaring kings and trumpeting queens of the African plains, with good reason. Tourism is Kenya's second largest industry. In 2006, wildlife accounted for 70% of tourism earnings. Yet the world's largest land mammal is under siege. 2011 saw the most poaching in 20 years. In Kenya, more than 200 elephants have already been killed for their tusks just this year. What has caused the, the sudden increase in pressure to poach uh, for, for ivory is the increased uh, poverty levels in, um, in the rural areas across the entire continent. We also have low levels of education throughout the continent. And uh, one of the latest uh, phenomena that has come up is the increased movement of businessmen between Africa and the Middle East countries. Illegal ivory flows from Africa to all directions. In China, over 6,500 kilograms of illegal ivory were seized between 2009 and 2011. More recently, $2 million worth of illegal ivory was seized in New York. This cruel trade is a threat not only to tourism, but also to the ecosystem. They're a really critical part of maintaining the natural habitat. Um, they provide a lot of dung for different animals. They provide a lot of fertilization using their dung. Um, they pull down certain trees which are good for other animals to feed off. Unfortunately, poaching isn't the only threat to Kenya's elephants. In Savo, for example, the biggest challenge is that to do with conflict between people and elephants. And the why this happens is because um, elephants have a tendency to move from one place to the other, of course looking for pasture, looking for water. Elephants' migratory lifestyle means certain areas can't simply be cut off with electric fencing. This competition for space and resources creates many problems, from human, livestock and elephant death to financial ruin. A farm that's crop raided at night by elephants could lose up to 20, 30 bags of potential harvest. And if that's maize, that can be 20, 30, 40, 50,000 shillings worth of damage can be done in one night. So it's a huge loss to a farmer. Dr. Lucy King has come up with a solution that works for people and pachyderms. Her beehive fences are popping up across the country from Samburu to Tsavo. We learned through many years of, of research that elephants are scared of honeybees. Um, and this seems quite incredible, but actually bees can sting elephants around the eyes, up the trunk, behind the ears, behind the legs, and the elephants get very, very scared and they run away. King's fences are in high demand in park-adjacent communities like Sagalia, here in Kenya's Taita Taveta County. We woke up early in the morning, we just went around the shamba, we found the shamba nearly finished all the crops. While Nzumu and his wife hanged the last hive on their new fence, down the road, Tabitha Mwai's farm has been buzzing for three years. They can't enter the states. We are relieved. We get food. They pass aside, destroying elsewhere. Teaching farmers how to build their own hives can help offset their cost, which runs from 2,800 shillings to 5,000 shillings, or 33 to 59 US dollars each. North of Savo, in Nairobi, wildlife conflict is making international headlines. But you won't see elephants on the front page. You'll see lions. According to the Kenya Wildlife Service, over 400 livestock have been killed in Kitengela already this year. In June, several frustrated Maasai Morans hit back, sparing six lions. 
They said KWS was too slow to respond. Local pastoralist Joseph Lella sees their point. The other day, we called them here at 5.30 a.m. and they showed up at 5 in the evening. So they don't have any interest in safeguarding our properties. Across Africa, lion populations are shrinking and there are only about 40 lions in Nairobi National Park. Lela recently lost 20 of his sheep and goats and one cow in just two months. These attacks affected my family greatly because, for example, I have children in secondary school and for me to pay school fees for them, I rely on selling these goats and sheep. It's a problem many locals can relate to. Richard Turere's family was losing 10 cattle per year to lions until he came up with this bright idea. Uh, I invented these lights, flashlights, uh, because uh, I knew that the lions were afraid of something which can move because when someone walks out with a torch, uh, the, the lions will not, will not come because they will think this is a person coming for them when the light is flashing. Yeah. Since installing his lights around the livestock enclosure, or boma as it is called in Swahili, Richard's family hasn't lost a single cow, goat, or night's sleep. It's my battery, and uh, these are the, uh, the solar, uh, solar wires, and then they come directly to the battery, and then we get the power out, and then it's connected to the switch here. His neighbors are sleeping better too. I was, uh, installed six bombers of my neighboring bombers here. I've installed six flashlights now in this area. I don't charge money because it was a gift from God. I don't want to use it for money. I just want to help people in my area. Richard's lights even earned him a spot at Nairobi's prestigious Brook House International School. Now, several NGOs are helping him scale up the project so more bombers can benefit from his invention. Area Assistant Chief Nixon Parmesa thinks Richard's idea is perfect for the region. So I think there are only two ways to go, either flashlight or lion-proof bombers. But I think lion-proof bombers are more expensive than flashlight. So if all these people are going to be, uh, you know, all the, the bombers can be installed with the flashing light, then we will control permanently the, the issue of conflict with the uh, lion. The Ministry of Forestry and Wildlife is less optimistic. Stephen Manegene, Director of Wildlife, says poor land planning in the past means they'll have to fence off the park, a controversial notion for the Maasai community. You tell them tomorrow or today that we want to fence the park so that we protect your livestock from the lions. They will tell you no, because the relationship between this park and this community is more of a family relationship. Makui works closely with locals and the KWS to create a better relationship with wildlife. We pay them uh, 2,500 for a sheep and 2,500 for a goat and 5,000 shillings for a donkey and 15,000 for a cow. But those sometimes may be far below the market price. And since the government offers no compensation for killed livestock, the Wildlife Foundation offers what it can. Last year, the ministry drafted a new wildlife policy that aims to reverse the problems of the past, like poor land planning, and lack of community engagement. The new policy will also mean compensation for people like Lela when their livestock is killed. But who knows when the new bill will pass? For now, Kenyans look to people like Dr. Lucy King and Richard Turere for inspiration. With a little flash and a few thousand bees, they are making life easier for Kenyans both the two-legged and the four-legged kind.